Ladies and gentlemen on the Shred Gaming Silicon video, let us discuss the Xbox One's price reduction. It has been confirmed that in the UK at least, the price is going to be going down to only 399 Great British Pounds. That is inclusive of Titanfall after release date, which is going to be the 14th of March in the United Kingdom. Now, for those of you who are in the United States, Titanfall is going to become part of a bundle, limited edition, which includes a DLC code for uh, Titanfall, the Xbox One console, the Kinect sensor, the wireless, the headset, blah, 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 blah. But the big news here, because that's going to be exactly the same price as now, the big news is that in the United Kingdom, the price is going to be going down to only £399, which is going to be saving you a substantial amount of money. It's also going to put this console pretty much on the level playing field as the PS4 in the UK, if you include one game into the equation. For example, if you were to look at the price of Infamous, Infamous I'm sorry, Second Son in the United Kingdom, uh, with the PS4, it's $389.99 with one online retailer. So that's £10 cheaper. And let's face it, if you're spending like £300, £400, you're not really going to give a crap about the 10 bucks. So really, this makes this pretty much a level playing field. So is this a good thing or a bad thing? Well, for Microsoft, it's kind of a bad thing because it obviously is an indication that the xbox one isn't selling that well in the united kingdom we kind of know this anyway for those of us who are considering buying an xbox one for example myself well sweet dude you know it works out really well for me because i was going to buy an xbox one and titanfall so mentally i was just setting aside like 500 great british pounds here's the problem there's already been a couple of websites uh, including VG247, that are running articles. And one of the articles is, and I quote, Xbox One's UK price cut is a two-finger uh, up at U uh, uh, the adopters. Because not only is it a price cut, but you're also getting Titanfall for completely and utterly free. Now, let's be a little bit analytical here. It's obvious that this is timed pretty much perfectly with Titanfall. It was obvious they were waiting for Titanfall because it was the big game that they knew was going to help shift systems. Now, in my personal opinion, and this is going to make me sound a little bit of a broken record, but here's the issue. If you've got a reasonable PC, it's kind of difficult to argue to buy the Xbox One for Titanfall because... Titanfall runs better even on a mid-range graphics card on PC. These aren't according to my benchmarks. These are according to like several benchmarks across the internet. Pretty much like the R7 270X, the GTX 750 Ti, several other cards. Pretty cheap price range, like 100 to 200 pounds range. Can easily run Titanfall. So you can get basically even an older processor and run Titanfall. But for those of us who are looking for to buy the Xbox One for other reasons, this represents a really good deal. The problem is, well, there's been a couple of problems. Firstly, many people have criticized the price of the Xbox One's initial launch. It was £430 in the UK, which many considered to be too expensive, considering that the PS4 was considerably cheaper, considering that you couldn't upgrade the hard drive. Many people are going to cite the fact that the Xbox One isn't as powerful in terms of both, well, memory and GPU. But to be honest with you, I don't necessarily feel that that's a selling point for either the PS4 or the Xbox One. I more feel it's got to do with the games in this particular case. But even if you were to count the performance difference for many it was it was very much a case of look most of the games out at the start were multi platforms there's not been that many exclusives so most people just opted to buy for the cheapest system there was a couple of other issues with the xbox one a lot of people weren't comfortable with connect which i kind of felt silly i didn't really think that microsoft was spying on you or anything like that which of course were the rumors going along early on and microsoft definitely were hurt with the whole online drm thing in fact i saw some people posting well images of inside physical stores where the employees there the people working the staff had to actually write out uh, signs 
that were surrounding the Xbox One or even the entrance saying, paraphrasing here, but basically, did you know that the Xbox One is not always online only? Did you know that you can trade in disc games? That type of thing. And that's obviously a symptom that there's been a lot of misinformation about the system. Now, obviously, GDC is coming up soon, but it's been confirmed that Microsoft are mostly focused on E3, which means that a lot of reveals are obviously going to have to wait for a certain amount of time. So there's two ways that you can look at this. You can either look at this as a really great deal if you've not bought the console yet and you're thinking about doing so within the next couple of weeks. For example, you want to get Titanfall, you want to get Destiny, and so on. And you think, you know what, this is a great option, it's a great opportunity, might as well pick it up now. On the other hand, if you're an early adopter, particularly if you've just recently bought the system in preparation for Titanfall, although to be honest with you, it was fairly evident that there was going to be a Titanfall package available, but obviously we didn't know the price point. And a, a lot of people assumed it was going to be like the 450 mark, which was the price of other games packaged in with the Xbox One in most retailers within the United Kingdom. But let's assume that you've already bought the, the Xbox One. Let's say, for example, you bought it a month ago, and you bought that with, let's say, Dead Rising and another game. Well, you're going to be pretty pissed because effectively you've just basically wasted a small amount of money. Now, how many people this bothers, of course, is really kind of down to you. For example, for me, personally, my personal standpoint on this, I wouldn't actually be that bothered. I mean, I'd be a little bit like, really, if it was a couple of weeks, maybe like a week, I would be pretty pissed. But if it was like a month, two months, it wouldn't bother me that much. I'd say, you know what? Okay, I'm a little bit annoyed, particularly because I'm missing out on effectively a free version Titanfall. But the actual £30 wouldn't really bother me. I just look at it, look, I've had a month of fun for £30. I'd consider that okay. The free Titanfall, though, that would be the thing that mostly bothered me. I'm hoping Microsoft give this as like a retroactive thing for early adopters, but honestly, I don't really know if they're going to do that. They certainly did for the original Xbox. Like, if you were a, 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 an adopter of the original Xbox, so this is back like 12 years ago in 2002, and this is because of sluggish sales, they offered two free games if you were an early adopter, plus as well, I believe, an extra controller. They gave you something. I think it was an extra controller. Um, and that's if um, you were to buy the console before the price cut. So they basically did that as a, look, we're sorry, our bad, here's some free games. So Microsoft have to be a little bit careful here because the problem with a price cut is it can appear a little bit desperate. It's never a good sign to have a price cut. I mean, it can be good to spur sales on, but most people are aware that the sales of the Xbox One have been a little bit sluggish, particularly within the UK. So what are my thoughts and opinions on this? Well, it really depends on your side of the fence. If you're someone who wants to buy the system within the next couple of weeks, it's a great option, it's a great deal. Even if you're within the United States, it clearly makes sense just to wait for the Titanfall bundle to appear. On the other hand, if just a couple of days ago, you'd walked into your local store with whatever amount of cash it took for you to buy the game and a, uh, sorry, a couple of games in the system and you're just now sitting there thinking well i basically wasted or i've lost out on anyway at least 50 to 70 pounds because let's face it titanfall is going to retail at least 40 pounds plus as well in addition to that the 30 pounds for the console itself that's saved you know you're looking at about 70 pounds possibly even 80 depending on the rrp of everything and so that would piss off quite a few people, which is not really a good sign. So my opinion, it's great for Microsoft in the long haul. It will be part of a strategy to obviously try and get the system out to as many people as possible. But it also gives a lot of ammunition for those who are just recent um, users of the system. But here's the thing, it doesn't really matter when you 
Okay, let me rephrase. It doesn't really matter when Microsoft chooses to do that price reduction. Someone's going to be pissed. The difference is, however, is because it's so close to launch, it feels that little bit more of a slap in the face. So, it's kind of 50-50, and it really just does depend on your perspective on this one. Anyway, I'm going to let you guys go. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, or maybe not, depending, I guess, when you bought on Xbox One. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.